I, I said about, I'll, I'll fly away is what I always say with I saw the light. So here he is. He put it on there first thing today. And I'm like, oh, my. Just for you. Just for me, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad everybody was able to be here today. Or is it is able to be? We are here. Yes. <laughs> we, we, it looks like we had some technical difficulties. The stream, it, it's now a river. And it's not flowing. <laughs> it's all backed up. I, I had... I just, I quit trying. I, I don't know if it happened the same time that we had the malfunction. Did you have a malfunction with your computer up there? I think we had a malfunction all at the same time. And that, that shut my stream down, which also meant it messed up them, and I'm not trying anymore. We're going to just going to worship, have fun. I'll record it on the camera, and if it records well, I'll upload it, and that'll be that. <sighs> Let's start with a word of prayer. How about that? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I am grateful. Grateful that no matter what technicalities and problems we have here on this world, or in this world, we can look to you, we can come to you, and you're always there. There is no glitch, there is no frustrating black screen or blue screen, just you. And Father, today, I am grateful that we have you, and that you have us. So today, Father, in this service, we ask that you would just enter in, that you would let each of us know that you are here in a special way. And Father, today, we ask that you would just uh, have your way in this service, that each person would uh, reconnect with you, and that we would be able to walk away from this place doing your will in our life. We ask this all this morning, Father, in your precious name, amen. Amen. All right. So, announcements. Uh, we are collecting an alabaster offering tomorrow. Today. Today. Not tomorrow. <laughs> today. And uh, Family Fun Night is this Friday, February 25th at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Unless it warms up a lot. And then we might have a campfire, but I doubt it. <laughs> uh, we will be collecting the love offering next week. Next Sunday, for the Garmin family who had the uh, fire, um, just if you want to contribute, you can either put your your offering in an envelope, or I think we're going to use the church again. We'll just let you come up and drop it in the church, however you want to give. Um, but that will be next Sunday. There are envelopes in the foyer if you want to use one of them. Lent begins on Wednesday, March 2nd, and the... The Lenten devotional book is out in the foyer, so you are able to get one and use it. It's there for you. And uh, there is a special ministries meeting on March 3rd at 7 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. Also, Ron and Penny have two extra tickets to Winter Jam Friday, March 4th at the Bryce Jordan Center. If you would like to have them, speak to Penny and Ash Ashley or Ronnie, and they can give you the details. I don't think there's any charge for them, am I right? They're free. All you have to do is ask. Uh, there's a lead weekend training coming up on Saturday, March 5th, at, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our church. At least I think so. I'm going to have to verify that because I was told 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I'm going to check on that. But the uh, training is March 5th. There is no cost. There's a grant to cover the cost. Lunch will be provided. The event is open to the first 50 people, including other congregations who sign up. So there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer on the, on the table. If you are watching from home and you would like to attend that, you have to get in touch with me and let me know. Uh, I would like to know either today or tomorrow so I can send them the email on Tuesday morning letting them know how many people from our church is planning to attend there's also a sign-up sheet in the foyer for meals for Celebrate Recovery. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for Children's Church. We still need someone to cover May and September. Volunteers must have up-to-date clearances. And any kids that attended the Valentine's Day party and decorated hearts for the sign can take their hearts home today. Cancellations due to weather will be made over one call, the website, and Facebook. <coughs> any questions? Any other announcements? All right. 
I guess it's time to march. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and have our alabaster march this morning. Tithes and offerings are still out in the foyer on the, on the stand, but uh, we are going to collect our alabaster offering up here in the bucket. Right? <laughs> Who counts the in the bucket? Put it in the bucket if you can. All right. So would you stand with me? And let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. And today, Father, as we participate in this alabaster march, as we give money to the church to use to build other churches and, and to meet the needs of pastors in other countries, Father, we ask that you would bless those who give, but also those who are going to be using it for your kingdom. Father, we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Please come. <laughs> start our uh, praise and worship time with uh, our call to worship, which comes from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 37, so if you would stand with me, please. And again, it's from Psalms 37, verses 1 to 11, and then um, 39 and 40 as well. And it reads, <clears throat> of David, do not fret because of the wicked, do not be envy envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass, and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your, he will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry, carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It, on, it only leads to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet, <clears throat> yet a little while the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their, places, for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the, the land, and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He, <clears throat> he is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. And rescues them from he, he rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Alright. Well, it uh, looks like the we're still not having any words, but good news, the songs that we're going to sing, you should hopefully know at least a little bit, at least the chorus. Um, so we're going to start with I Saw the Light and Shine, Jesus Shine. So whatever you know of it, sing it out nice and loud this morning. Or maybe more, who knows? I wonder, so aimless, I feel with sin.
pancreas to open up the valve up, but they're still looking at the internal pancreas, so it's still very bad. And also, Bob Smith is not doing well. Others this morning. I have a phrase for yeah. the first time since I've come out of the hospital. I'm going to sit without coughing or having to take a deep breath. Any of those people in front of me because I can't hear it too well. It's a joyful okay. voice. It's family. It's a joyful voice. <laughs> How have you been fed? Fellowship, evangelism, discipleship. Well, George Green was able to come home yesterday. Um, he's staying with his daughter. Um, just, you know, he still has, he's using a walker to walk with, but, you know, from coming from on a ventilator to deciding whether or not they were going to take him off the ventilator to be able to walk and be at home now is um, just an answer to prayer in itself. Um, Thursday, we got a chance to uh, do some babysitting. And um, for these old folks, you know, having little ones, there was five of them under the age of seven. And um, so, the, and the youngest was six months. Um, there was supposed to be two more, but one of them got sick, so we didn't have, you know, we were to have seven, but we ended up with five. Then, um, and that went really well. I mean, I was, I was just blessed with how they, you know, interacted with one another, and um, of course with the baby, everybody wanted to hold the baby, you know. But anyhow, um, that was the first time that his parents had left him. Um, and he stayed with us overnight because they had driven to Indiana and they didn't get back home till 5.30 the next morning. So anyhow, he stayed with us. Needless to say, our electricity went off about 11 o'clock on Thursday evening. And speaking of which, there comes Tucker and, yeah. and little Reed. Um, but anyway, um, just was blessed to have them with us. And Kevin so kindly came up, and uh, because it, till eight o'clock in the morning the electric still wasn't on, so he came up and helped us to go down and uh, stay at their place and eat some warm breakfast and drink some hot coffee because it was kind of cold, maybe kind of cold at our house, needless to say. But thank God for um, for the pastor. Well, no, it was your son-in-law. It wasn't the pastor. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was told, you need to go get my mom. <laughs> She's told. Okay, okay. Well, whatever it was, uh, whatever capacity that he was in, I just thank God for it. And I thank God for all the children that we can be an influence on um, and that he has blessed us to have so many in our lives. Okay. All right. Others this morning, how have you been blessed? How have you been fed? I want to say I'm thankful that the first several testimonies this morning were all praises. Yeah. Um, and as we were singing this morning, I thought, um, you know, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you know, about the power of Jesus' name. But the way that happened is by that cross. If Jesus had not been willing to die, he would have been just another wise teacher. <coughs> He would not have been the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I would have not had the ability to have eternal life through him. So I'm thankful for that <coughs> sacrifice this morning. And, you know, yesterday, well, you guys know I'm always, like, into nature stuff. But when the um, National Weather Service sent out that emergency alert, I looked out the window, and it was sunshine you know, with clouds, but there was blue sky. But then about 45 minutes later, I couldn't see anything hardly out the window when that snow squall came through as predicted. So, you know, you never know in life when your life can change on the turn of a dime, but you know the master of the wind if you know Jesus Christ, and I'm thankful that I know him this morning. Others this morning, praises, requests. 
I want to say I'm thankful. I mean, Becky said why she's blessed by um, having the young people. I think. But I, I want to, I'm blessed because of the influencers that I've had in my life from this church. Um, and I mean, the ones that I still look up to for and depend on a lot. I mean, you may not realize it, but I do. Um, and I find it so encouraging that it has been a long time, but we are we are a we are a lot. This church is a lot. I mean, just look at it. I mean, we have all these little people. I mean, not the church. It's just getting getting. <laughs> Well, I don't think I've ever heard that word in church, but giddy, giddy works. <laughs> Others this morning, phrases and requests? I'd like to remember Doreen Jean. I talked to Doreen last day. She called me up and said that they have tubes in Doreen, Doreen Jean, but the one plugged up, and so they had to go in and put a bigger tube in but they've got two pieces of infection off the well, whatever it is a lot of a lot of fluid yeah and uh, they said if, it, if they don't clear it up then you might have to go in and do an operation on the test okay so we want to put a little first in all right and darlene is, is that her incision is it still healing in her abdomen or there was some Slowly. Small? Okay. Slowly. Yeah. Slowly. Okay. We'll just put her on there too. Yeah. Others this morning. Praises and requests. I just praise God for legal meetings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had an issue with the DOT and somehow they thought that I canceled insurance and they thought there was glass in my coverage. Talk about a mess. But I had to take half of that down in the Navy, talker's office, and everybody else involved in this time for just taking care <laughs> The DOT. <laughs> I'm glad you're legal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's somebody else over here. Yes. Yeah. Um, Adina is going to take her children's ministry, so if she comes and asks you for help, please be willing. I need all the help I can get. I, too, am thankful, like Krista, for the kids. Um, they are always a blessing to me. And I'm just sitting here listening to the noises, and I just love it. It makes me giddy, too. Giddy. It makes me giddy, too. Not giddy. Get no, Getty. Getty. G-I-T-D-Y. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else this morning? Praises and requests. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll go to prayer. If Matthew would come up and lead us in a song. And if you have a prayer need and would like to come to the altar, it's open. If you would like to be anointed for some reason or other, get my attention and we can do that too. <coughs>
for this day. We are truly grateful for the blessings you've given us. As so many have shared this morning, the blessings of our children and grandchildren. And maybe in some cases, great-grandchildren. Father, they are truly a blessing. And uh, we had so many praises this morning regarding children, regarding other things. And Father, we, we think of Rochelle's praise that her grandmother, nine years old, truly a blessing. And Father, the fact that her uncle Skip is able to come home. And while he's able to come home, we know there is a difficult time ahead. So Father, today we ask that you would enter in to Rochelle's Uncle Skip's home. That you would give comfort and peace. That you would give him <coughs> pain free. That help him to be pain free. And Father, today we ask that whatever his needs may be, that they would be met by you. That you would enter into that place. That you would comfort him, but not only him, but his family as well. That you would give them peace with the situation and help them to just face the future leaning on you. Father, we also lift up Rochelle's request for Kelly who has his pancreatic cancer. And Father, you know, you know her needs, you know her struggles. And, and Father, today we ask that you would just continue to touch her body. Give the doctors wisdom and knowledge and, and foresight to, to prescribe the correct procedures and, and uh, treatment options. Father, we ask that you would just allow them to do what is right so that Kelly is able to recover from this cancer. And Father, today we, we thank you for the report on Josh Match. And Father, today as, as he sits by his bed, Father, something that they didn't think he was going to be able to do, we ask that you would just continue to strengthen him that you would build him up and that you would allow him to walk out of that hospital and return to his home healthy and strong. We uh, continue to celebrate with Carolyn's praise that she was able to sing today without coughing and, and clearing her throat. And Father, today we, we celebrate with her because it's been a long road. And it is a long road to recovery for almost everybody who suffers from these kinds of ailments. So Father, today, not only do we ask that you would just continue to help Carolyn to recover from, from this, this problem she's been having, but also, Father, that you would help others with the same situation. Help them to breathe easier, breathe deeper, to breathe without the use of oxygen, Father. We... Uh, Know George Green, who who was had COVID here and, and has been suffering for over the past few months. And Father, he's home today with his daughter. So Father, we ask that you would just enter into George's life in a new way. That you would help lift him up. That you would be with him. And that you would keep him healthy. That you would bless his family. Draw them together. That you would help them to, to heal together as George heals, the rest of the family heals from the worries and the stress that they've been under. Father, we ask that you would unite them together and that you would give them comfort and peace as they continue to, to mourn France passing but also celebrate George's return home. And this morning, Father, we lift up Darla Jean who, who's been dealing with dealing with this, this situation from a surgery weeks ago. Father, we ask that, that you would continue to touch her body, that you would clear the infection from it, but also, Father, that you would give the doctors the wisdom and knowledge. The wisdom and knowledge to give her the right treatment. The wisdom and knowledge to help her get back to health and, and return home. Father, today we ask that you would just continue to bless Darla Jean. We also lift up her sister Darlene, who's been recovering from a surgery back, all, I think it was in September. <laughs> Father, this wound still is healing. So we ask that you would just continue to touch Darlene, 
and, and bless her and strengthen her and, and help her to continue to improve. <coughs> Father, we lift up our prayer request from earlier this week, the, the unborn child that, that uh, the, the parents know there's a heart defect, but they have to seek other medical advice from, from other places. And Father, we ask that you would just be with this family and, and that you would help them in their struggles. The, 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 the four-month-old child that, that was in the hospital since birth that had to have a procedure, I believe it was on Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday. And Father, we, we, we heard on Wednesday that not only did she have the one procedure and it went well, but that she had two procedures and now there's only one to go. Father, we thank you for entering into that room and, and gifting the doctors with skills and knowledge, but also touching this little girl's body and, and helping her to remain strong. Be with her parents. Be with her family as, as they wait and watch as they worry. And Father, other prayer requests we had this week, there, there seems to be, there, there were so many, and I can't remember them all, but Father, whatever there is out there that, that we need to think about, that we need to dwell upon, Father, help us to dwell on the things that we can lean on you to do. Father, today we lift up the Garmin family as they continue to recover from this, this barn fire that that basically wiped out their future in farming. So Father, today, as we pray for them, as we lift them up, we ask that as we prepare for next week's love offering, that you would inspire each of us to give just a little bit more than we are able. That we are able to help this family not only recover from this loss, but also bless them and draw them closer to you. And Father, today, in our service here this morning. We ask that you would just enter in and that you would speak to each and every individual. That you would speak to us about our needs. Speak to us about our desires. And that as we hear your word proclaimed, that you would speak to us in your own special way helping us to draw closer to you and to do your will. We ask these things, Father, this morning in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All righty. Children's Church. Time to go. While they're doing that, I'll put the lid on church. Everything's okay. <laughs> we only have to worry about the baby. I know, but it beeped. That's why I turned around real quick. We're good. <laughs> from an event that you thought you that would be fun or interesting? Have you ever been left out? I can remember times in my life when I felt this way. Moments when I was craving to be included in the activities of my friends, but for some reason, unbeknownst to me, <clears throat> I was not invited. I was not included. So I have to assume I was excluded. Maybe their parents would not allow them to include so many kids, so many friends. Maybe it was because there was only room in the vehicle for six and I would be the seventh. Maybe I was not as well liked by them as I thought I was. I could hear them whispering to each other about their plans and it seemed obvious that they did not want me to hear, even though I did. So I played along and I pretended not to hear and pretended not to care. I even pretended not to be aware of their plans. Even though as a child I was well aware that I was being excluded. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt as if you were left out? 
What feelings come to the surface in these moments? How did you act? Or should I say, how did you react to those feelings? What did you do? In our passage this week, Jesus is still preaching on the plain. He's still delivering his sermon. And in the portion we read today, he's giving us a set of actions on how we should respond to those who wrong us and those who do wrong in the eyes of God. So would you join me as we share the reading of this Sunday's passage from Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. And stand with me as we read this. <clears throat> But I say to you, that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to, to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. <laughs> Heavenly Father, today we thank you for this word. And Father, today I ask that you would just teach each of us the lesson that we need to learn. May it come from your lips and not mine. And Father, today we ask your blessings upon each and every person who hears this message. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so how do you respond to rejection? How do you respond to discrimination? How do you respond to condemnation from your peers or even worse yet, your friends? Jesus' disciples and those following after him are beginning to experience these things. And at this particular moment in his ministry, Jesus is giving his disciples a pep talk. A few moments earlier, Jesus said, Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. We read that last week. We talked about that last week. But it ties right into what we're talking about today. When the disciples headed off on this journey, I wonder if they knew what to expect. Would they be greeted by everybody with open arms and, and cheers? Or would they be greeted with slurs and insulting remarks? Would strangers throw things at them? Did they realize that this life would not be an easy one? Well, their life as disciples of Jesus the Messiah would not be an easy one. And I'm sure they were meeting with many unexpected comments. They would be despised and they would be rejected. So Jesus follows last week's message of blessings and woes with a message about loving their enemies. Their response to persecution was to be different than society's norm. At the time, retribution was the common response. When somebody hurt, when someone hurt you, somebody abused you or they did anything to you that was unjust, you responded with a like action. They had the attitude of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's the attitude that prevailed in the lives of the people of that day and age. Jesus presented a new standard, a positive approach, a nonviolent approach in response to any form of hostility. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. 
Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Well, who among us is able to live up to that standard? <laughs> I know of nobody, not even of myself, that can live up to that standard. That's hard. That's hard living. That's, that's, a, hard, that's a hard rule to follow. The order of our day is no different than Jesus' day. <coughs> Payback is still the norm. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Maybe that's what I should have named this sermon today. But you got something different. In some civilizations, it seems to, or in, in ours, in our civilization, it seems to have taken a step backwards. So if somebody does you wrong, you not only do similar to them, but you do worse. You make them regret making that, that wrong or un, to, the unjust action towards you. It's, we find ourselves in a nation where half the population is still upset over the presidential election. The man they wanted didn't get in the White House. And the thing is, I don't think there's anything we can do about it. They're not going to let anybody forget it until the next election. Now, will all of America rally behind President Biden? Or will we remain polarized as we were in recent times? Will Republicans and Democrats pull together and unite the nation? Or will they continue to do what's best for themselves as a party and as individuals? How do you love people like that? Oh, that's tough, isn't it? We have a real challenge ahead of us. Making amends with people of opposing views takes patience and compromise. Yet, this is precisely what Jesus wants his followers to do. In fact, he even took it a step further. He said, give to everyone who bakes from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, don't ask for the back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The golden rule. That's what it is. And that's the golden rule I was taught in first grade. It was the, the command I was taught when I was in Sunday school here at this church. But that's how simple getting our world and our country back on track can be. If we've been watching the Olympic coverage over the past couple of weeks, we cannot help but hear of the young figure skater from Russia who, who had a uh, failed drug test. Apparently there was something in her system that wasn't supposed to be there. And yet she was allowed to participate <coughs> in the skating events. Now, I don't know why she's even allowed to participate, to be very honest. If she had a positive drug test, rules are rules. It's all laid out, and the punishment is spelled out clearly. Many good athletes in the past have, have been excluded from participation. Yet this girl has been allowed. And I know that this decision was for her to skate. And it has put a damper on the positive events that have been taking place in the Olympics. The thrill of victory for those who participated. And, and according to the rules and standards. But that thrill is somewhat tainted now because of this whole event that has centered on this one girl who had a negative drug test. What should we do about this 15-year-old girl? Ain't much we can do, is there? There's not much we can do. We can love her. Many say we should not have allowed her to escape. Many say she should not be allowed to participate in the events at all. Many say that she should be stripped of any medals that she has won and received. But Jesus says to forgive her. Jesus says not only allow her to participate, but do we give her a medal? I don't know. Forgiving our friends who have different points of view is one thing. But loving our enemies is much more a much more daunting task. Forgiving is hard work. And let there be no doubt about it. It's very difficult. Nevertheless, make no mistake, loving your enemies is hard work also. 
maybe even harder than forgiving your friends. Jesus is advocating a behavior that is totally opposite from revenge. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. I've often wondered why, if somebody hits you, would you turn and let them hit, hit you again? Until it happened to me. <laughs> and I'll be honest, it was a long time ago. And I can't believe I was able to do it, but I did. If we acted like Jesus taught, we would most likely be seen as foolish. Criticized for our tolerance, maybe? For our leniency? Maybe even thought to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> to love our enemies prevents us from acting out of our own self-hatred. It means that to do harm to others in any way is totally out of the question. It means that we live by a higher standard. One that leads us to a new and a different world. One that transcends the one in which we live now. It means that forgiveness is at the very core of our faith. To follow, to follow this principle is humanly impossible. On the other hand, look what happens in the Middle East when a terrorist blows himself up in a marketplace. The government responds by launching a missile attack in a suspected neighborhood where others from that group, a terrorist group may be, or where sympathizers may be. Or perhaps it begins in reverse. Unfortunately, there's, never, there's a never-ending tragic cycle of violence that does nothing but escalate and cause further bloodshed, and even more heinous acts of violence. The same kind of reciprocal violence happens all over the world. Rather than see it as revenge, we see it as a war on terrorism. But let there be no mistake. This is revenge. It's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Jesus calls us to break the cycle of violence and selfishness. That's what He calls us to do. We need to break the cycle of violence and selfishness. If somebody hits you, you don't hit them back. You just let them hit the other cheek. Jesus calls us to take a road that does not seek revenge. Someone has to take the first step. Someone has to model a behavior that sets the stage. A stage for peace. A stage for harmony. And yes, even forgiveness. That is us. That is what we are called to do. To, to set the stage for peace, for harmony, for forgiveness. Genuine people of faith use restraint. And genuine people of faith love their enemies. So if we have a difficult time loving our enemies, does that mean we're not genuine people of faith? I don't think so. I think we just have a lot to work with. That's what I'm talking about. What we need to work on. We are not competing in the Olympics. We're not fighting terrorists. We're not putting on a pair of skates and hitting the ice. And we're not driving a Humvee down some war-torn city. We are ordinary citizens trying to make a living. And surely Jesus is not talking about us when He says to love our enemies. How can we bring this closer to home? I read a story this week that Dr. Martin Luther, cared, Martin Luther King shared in a sermon many years ago. The name of the sermon was A Knock at Midnight. And in it, he said he and his brother were driving one evening from Atlanta to Chattanooga. His brother was driving the car, and for some reason, the drivers were very rude that night. They weren't dimming their headlights. As they were coming towards him. Few drivers passed, or a few drivers passed, and none of them did their lights. Now, Dr. King's brother looked over and in an angry tone, he said, I know what I'm going to do. Next person who gives me the high beams, I'm going to flip my lights on as bright as I can. I'm going to swerve over towards the center of the road. 
and squeeze them off the road. Have you ever done that? I've seen people do that. I wonder, what in the world are you thinking? <laughs> Maybe it's not Dr. King I'm talking about here. Maybe it's me I'm talking about. My brother looks gilly over there. <laughs> Anyhow, Dr. King looked at his brother. Oh no, don't do that. There'd be too much light on this highway and it will end up in mutual destruction for us all. Somebody's got to have some sense on this highway. Somebody must have sense enough to dim the light. And what is the trouble? Or I should say, that is the trouble, isn't it? That we don't dim the lights. When somebody's coming towards us and, and we think they're wronging us, well, we wrong them right back. It's about revenge. As all the civilization of the world move forward on this highway of history, having looked at other civilizations that refuse to dim the lights, then they also have decided to refuse to dim the lights. But you've got to think about it this way. In those other civilizations, when they refused to dim the lights, that civilization eventually fell. It collapsed. It was destroyed. And English... Historian Andrew or Arnold Toynbee stated in the late 1960s, read this, read, read it real close. Of the 22 civilizations that have appeared in history, 19 of them collapsed when they reached the moral state that the United States is in right now. That was in the 1960s. I think it's a miracle that the United States is still alive and well. Or are we well? Of the 22 civilizations that have appeared in history, 19 of them collapsed when they reached the moral state the United States is in now. That was in 1966, 67, somewhere around there. It's because civilizations have failed to have enough sense to dim the lights. They didn't love their enemies. It was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And somewhere, somebody must have some sense. Men must see that force brings force, hate brings more hate, toughness produces more toughness. And it's all a descending spiral, ultimately ending up in destruction for everybody. Somebody's got to have sense enough to turn away from the hate and the evil of this world. Sense enough to shine the light of love and forgiveness within the world. Could it be us? Could we do that? Jesus said it, and I stand by it. Love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. To be children of the Most High is to be people who live by a higher standard. They are people who ascribe to a non-violent lifestyle. They are people who are willing to turn the other cheek. They are people who break the cycle of violence by dimming their lights. Who is there in your life that you need to forgive? Who is there in your life that has been excluded? And going back to that, who is there that you need to forgive? If you were one of those people who feel as if you were excluded, you need to forgive those people who excluded you. Who is there in your community that could use a hand up? A little relief from the struggle that they're living in. And what is Jesus telling you to do about it? Jesus is saying, reach out to the poor. Reach out to the lonely. Reach out to the brokenhearted and the weak. Help them to get back on their feet. Help them to get back in an upright position. Embrace them as a friend. And include them in your world. Welcome them into your world. And help them improve theirs. Today, we as a church have opportunities opportunities to make a difference in our community, opportunities to help the less fortunate in our world, 
But we as a church must not wait for them to come to us. Many times when we are at our kindness outreaches, people are asking us, why are you doing this? And we answer them most of the time because we want you to know that we are here. And if you ever have a need that you can call on us. We are here to help. We're not here to judge you. We're not here to criticize. Although we do plenty of that. Well, maybe not all of us. But I, I can find myself being very critical at times. It's a struggle. We're not here to criticize you. We're here to help you. And, you know, we tell them if they have a need to give us a call. But they rarely call. Rarely do they call. So we must keep our eyes and ears open to what's going on in the community. And then we, we need to take action when we see a need. The Gardner family didn't call and ask us to take a love offering. God put that in my heart. So we're going to have an offering. But if God puts something in your heart, what do you do? Well, if you can't do it on your own, you can come to me or, or somebody else in leadership at the church and, and we can talk about it. We just need to keep our eyes and ears open and take action. If you have an idea, let somebody else know. Let somebody in the board know. Let me know. And together, we can turn the tide of this world, or at least our community, towards Jesus. And let us not forget the love that Jesus gave to us. When we were lowly outcasts in sin, that's the kind of love that, that we should be giving to our fellow man. The kind of love that Jesus gave to us when we didn't even appreciate it. Matthew, when you guys come. I know there is a song that we were going to close with. I don't know if we're going to keep the same song or not. You're still doing such love? Okay. Pastor Kevin? Yes. You're going to amen. <laughs> Thank you. That's not a bad thing. So we're going to sing the song Such Love. Matthew. Father, we thank you for this day. 
Father, we thank you for the love that you showed to us when you sent Jesus into this world to die on that cross for our sins. Father, today help us to love our enemies. Help us to show the love that you showed to us to others. Help us to reach out to those who are in need. But even more so, Father, help us not to be overbearing. Help us to reach out in love. And if they accept, that we give it freely. But let us be persistent in this pursuit. Father, today as we leave this place, I ask that you would give each of us eyes to see the places where your love is needed. And to help us come up with ideas on how we may show that love to these people. Father, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here.